IHGN Studios. It's Braves Beat. Hello, Braves. I'm Matthew Miller. And I'm Luke Sherman. Luke, are you ready to finally do something in this class? Well, they kind of forced me to do this, so not really. Yeah, same. The PTO is hosting the Senior Lunch, formerly known as Dad's Cookout, at 50 West Burger Bar on Thursday, October 7th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So bring a parent or other adult to lunch at 50 West with your classmates. Volleyball courts and cornhole boards will be open for use as well. National Merit recognizes 15 Indian Hill students with six Braves named semifinalists in the 2022 scholarship competition. The six students named for the National Merit semifinalist competition are Julian Osbach, Annie Joy, Nikhil Nayak, Ryan Ramaker, Hannah Tran, and Kathy Zhao. In addition, eight Indian Hill students have been recognized as National Merit Commended Scholars. Gularano Almaratova, Isaac Fiore, Hunter Gillen, Tacey Hutton, Gwyneth Yoshe, Sophia Liu, Tejas Pasati, and Ethan Simons. Indian Hill also had one student, Catherine Yanez, recognized as a National Hispanic Scholar. Speaking of Hispanic scholars, September 15th to October 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month. One of our reporters got the chance to interview some of the members of the Spanish Club. So what are you pl what's the Spanish Club's plan for celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month? So we're planning to do a drive for the organization called Sucasa to help like gather canned goods, um, any like um, toiletries that we might that people might need to help raise awareness for this time of the year. So there, are there any more plans for Spanish Club? Um, so our first sort of party event coming up is going to be November 2nd for Dia de los Muertos. Um, it's going to be, I think, right after school in um, Sonora Lewis's room. And we're going to have like snacks and we're going to be building um, altars out of shoe boxes like these. So we're going to be putting some items in the shoe boxes for altars for Dia de los Muertos. And there's also going to be hot chocolate and pan de muerto. We hope to see you guys there and go ahead and tune into the announcements to hear more updates. Thanks, Shay. Spanish club sure sounds great. Attention freshmen and sophomores. We recognize that you guys haven't had a proper introduction to our favorite time of the week, flex. So we had one of our reporters, Marina, sit down with Mrs. Dunlap to get more of the do's and don'ts of Flex. All right, I'm here with Mrs. Dunlap today to talk about Flex. So Mrs. Dunlap, what is Flex? Flex is an 85 minute block of time during the week devoted to academic work. This is an opportunity for our students to complete homework, collaborate with others on projects or lab, work on past or future assignments, or even receive small group instruction from their teachers. So where did the idea for Flex come about? Well, we recognized several years ago the need for our students to work collaboratively with their peers and teachers. Our students are highly involved in activities that extend beyond the classroom. This opportunity allows our students time within their day to take initiative, work ahead on long-term assignments. So how should students utilize this time? We really want to encourage students to utilize this time wisely, practice good study habits, and take ownership of their learning. Well, how do I leave my flex room? Well, Marina, <laughs> you're allowed to leave only if you've been requested by a teacher. And how do I know if I've been requested? The flex request sheet is actually on your graduating classes Canvas home page. And how can I be requested? You can send your teacher an email or you can ask them in person to add you to the flex request sheet. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Wow, thank you, Mrs. Dunlap. We'll all be sure to use flex wisely. Junior Connor Vandenboon competed in the UC's College of Engineering and Science summer camp. Connor came in first place with his innovative design of the square barrel. The square barrel is an all-in-one filtration and collection tool used to help people get clean water. Great job, Mr. Boone. Now on to the sports report with Gino and Marina. Well, the Braves dominated this week in sports, so let's get into it. Starting off strong, our athletes of the week this week include Robbie Gutman and Noah Fraser for football, Ashley Singer and Marley Caddy for girls soccer, Wyatt Higgins for boys golf, Berta Carroll and Jenna Arnold for field hockey, Connor Wilkes and Ryan Kennebec for boys soccer, Dakota Spurrier and Becca Hoynes for volleyball, Maddie Kahn for girls golf, and last but not least, RJ Poffenberger for boys cross country. Wow, amazing job guys. Starting off strong, our girls soccer tied rivals Tippecanoe and McNick, 1-1 and 0-0 respectively but came to dominate on Wednesday against Finneytown 8-0, which was also the lone senior, Annie Isferding's senior night. Congrats, girls. 
On to boys soccer. The boys played Alter and tied 1 to 1 on Saturday, but destroyed Finneytown on Tuesday 4 to 0. Our Dogman won against Taylor 42 to 14 last Friday. Way to go boys. Let's get a winning streak. Now on to girls field hockey. Unfortunately, they lost 2 to 1 on Saturday in a sudden death overtime against Hathaway Brown. But they played Mount Notre Dame last night, which we don't have the scores for yet, but we are sure it's a win. Boys Golf had an excellent run this week as they won sectionals with Peter Shakley scoring a 72 and Wyatt Higgins with a 73. Peter also celebrated his senior night on Monday at Camargo Country Club. Congrats, Peter! Girls Golf had their sectional tournament at the Mason Golf Center. Maddie Kahn finished runner-up in the tournament. Congratulations! Swinging into girls tennis, they had their senior night yesterday at 345 at the Indian Hill Tennis Court. Congratulations, girls! In boys cross country, R.J. Poffenberger ran a sub-17 minute 5K. That's fast. Yeah. That is some serious speed. Keep it up, cross country. Now, looking ahead, the Dogmen play Madeira tonight at Madeira at 7 p.m. It is pink-themed in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Please pack the stands with pink in honor of celebrating this important month. Let's destroy those Mustangs, boys. Well, that's all we have for this week on sports. Be sure to get involved, and you can go to all the sporting events. You can find all the games posted on the Indian Hill Athletics Twitter. Back to you at the news desk. Thank you, Gino and Marina. Last weekend, our mock trial team, consisting of Gularano Omaratova, Paige Falter, Claire Hardock, Tacey Hutton, Joseph Kane, Nina Overton, Harrison Paddy, and Avery Valls, competed virtually at the exclusive Yale Bulldog Invitational. Indian Hill High School junior Joseph Kane won his second Outstanding Witness Award, and senior all-star Tacey Hutton won her 12th Outstanding Attorney Award, and our mock trial team earned top three in the nation. Great job, Braves. Last Saturday, the Braves marching band won first in their class at the Taylor Invitational. They won Best Color Guard, Best Percussion, and Best General Effects. Great job, Braves marching band. Braves Beat is introducing a new segment called Student Spotlight. Students now get the chance to be recognized for their accomplishments. On this week's first episode, Senior Andrew McGee got his very own comic book published, and Reese Tuttle got the chance to interview him. Let's check it out. Hello, Braves. Welcome to Student Spotlight. Today we have... Andrew McGee. Welcome. So, Andrew, what do you have for us today? Well, uh, during COVID, I worked on my very own comic book and finally got it published this year. And wow. I'm happy to start sharing it with the school. Well, congratulations. So, how did it start? How did you even like come about of wanting to do this? So I was with a bunch of friends and asking if you had any superpower, what would that be? And just kind of made a story behind everyone's interests and if they had a superpower, what it would be. Interesting. So. What would your superpower be? Uh, shape shifting, for sure. Interesting. So do you want to like show the camera like the cover or is there anything you want to? Sure. What's it it's called? This, Classified. It's called Classified. It's got a little picture of the illustrators and me on the back. It's a great book. You should try it out. So, do you want to give the viewers a quick summary of just the comic book itself? The comic book is set in the future in um, a warring society, and characters kind of grow and adapt throughout the series, hopefully. And I see this picture on the back. I don't know if the... What is that? Is that is that you? Uh, yeah, that's a picture of me and the two other illustrators because we haven't been able to meet in person, so we thought we'd draw a sketch of us together. Wow. Well, congratulations on getting your first comic book published. I mean, that's a huge accomplishment, and I bet there's probably a lot of people that really would love to be in your shoes right now. So congratulations, and thank you for coming and talking with me today, and I'm excited to see a part two, possibly. Thank you. Well, thank you. Back to you at the desk. Great work, Andrew. I can't wait to read that awesome book. We're finally done, Luke. Let's close this out. Just a bit more, Matthew. No, we're done. Okay. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and email us with any school updates. And remember, stay classy, Indian Hill. Hello, Braves, and welcome to this week's episode of The Danger Zone. Today, we're going to go big or go home for my first episode, and we have purchased some Black Mamba 6 hot sauce. Now, the manufacturers of this claim that it is 6 million Scoville units. For comparison, a jalapeno is only about 8,000 Scoville units, so this is a pretty big step up from what I'm used to. And, uh, I've got my rapid relief standing by, so we're just going to dive right into it. Set 
that side. Whew, smell it from here. Cheers. See you on the other side of this. Ooh. It's very. Oh, oh god. <clears throat> okay, it burns. Oh, no. Oh. It's very peppery and like vinegary. It doesn't even feel like it, I switched around my tongue. It's not even on my tongue. It's in my throat. I think my throat burns. Like, my throat, my ears, just <clears throat> on fire. Like, it's. Oh, God. I wouldn't say it's 6 million yet, though. It's like 600,000, like 10% of that, but it's not fun. Oh, that's not fun. All right. It's not getting worse, though, so I'm going to sign off from here, and I will see you whenever the next episode comes out.